Hello everyone. How are you all doing? Hope everyone is safe and fine. This week I brought another material practice drawings and those are hair and grass. It is interesting that I chose to paint these two together. The reason behind is that these two involve a similar kind of approach while painting. You could clearly see that the blades of grass can be compared to strands of hair. That's the similarity between these two materials and when we paint them together we could really attempt a same approach for both of them. So this time I would like to talk about the workflow that's widely popular and a must know practice. It's kind of something that should be in our checklist that we always remember this while starting a painting which is nothing but working from big to small. Yes. We all must have heard it being said repeatedly by almost every artist. This would make sense regardless of the medium that we choose to use, be it watercolor, oil painting, or digital painting, or even when you design something. Meanwhile, thinking about a big picture rather than the intricate parts would help to create a strong and easy solution first. Moreover, this should help the audience to get the idea as soon as they lay eyes on the picture. Example, working to get the silhouette properly as a first step is considerably thoughtful than starting to work on the eyes. Obviously, as the Rukia have committed this mistake as well, but as soon as I came to know about this workflow of working from big to small, I built this habit of implying this practice in my further paintings. It actually makes sense when we try to illustrate, do a concept, or especially when we do a painting that involves landscapes. So our first step should be to make sure that the idea is clear by looking at a silhouette that we create. But in this painting, talking about silhouettes doesn't make sense. So let's dig deeper into working from big to small. Okay, in this painting of hair, I started from a circular form in the beginning, then filled it with gradient colors and slowly worked my way towards forms and shapes of the chunks of hair that lies beneath the top layer of hair roughly. And concentrating on the details of the hair, which is the individual hairs that fall away from the face here, was the last thing I considered. This makes sense, right? Similarly, this approach would be very useful when we attempt to create a character, illustrate or do a figure drawing on our own. In other words, we can create a small thumbnail of the silhouette and check if it projects our idea clearly or not. In a character drawing, if this silhouette works, for example, we got the pose right in our thumbnail, we are good to go. We can work on the forms and shapes then. We can work on anatomy. Then we can work on individual parts of the body. Then we can work on the texture of the dress. And then lastly, on the fine details like scratch in the forehead of the character. This is just an example. This would apply in all other contexts in its own way. So coming back to the painting, let's talk about the things to be considered while drawing hair and grass. First and foremost, we need to work on the freehand strokes as that's the underlying necessity for this style of painting. Next, 
first we should consider the direction of these strokes meaning by looking at the strand of hair we can notice its origin and the direction of its flow and at the end where it falls that we should replicate clearly in our painting but this varies with the type of hair we draw whether it's curly hair or wavy hair or straightened hair or short hair any of that sort likewise in the grass painting we could see that the grasses are completely spread across the surface of an invisible circular ground here right that's why the direction of the strokes are important to be practiced next thing is that choosing a part of the painting to give more details rather than working on delicate details all over the painting this is an interesting point as we are composing our painting with a few focal points for the audience to look at we can clearly work on the details in these areas alone for instance in a close up flat portrait we can work on the eyes more than the neck likewise in the grass painting the top part where the light falls has been chosen for more details than the whole painting here and lastly we can always use references as we talked about in the last video of painting iron and water thank you so much for watching if you really like this video and find it useful please give a big fat thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more of these paintings see you all next video with another material practice drawing bye bye stay safe